So videos are basically made from a series of still frames, right? Each of which contain the standard derivatives of dx and dy that we've already been discussing. However, in addition, videos also have a time derivative, which allows us to compare the differences in the brightness values between successive frames. So what we're talking about now in, in adding time as a dimension, we're looking at second order derivatives. Um, or we have the ability to look at second order derivatives, which is essentially a derivative of a derivative. So what does that mean? Well, if we think about our analogy of position and velocity, right? If a first order uh, derivative of position is velocity, well, that same analogy can be extended to a second order derivative of velocity is acceleration, right? So in this case, we're measuring the change, how fast a change of dx and dy are changing. However, we're comparing it over time, uh, which is going to give us a, uh, an actual magnitude or a understanding of how movement, uh, in this case because the brightness is changing in the image based on what's moving, um, we can actually use an algorithm called optical flow. An optical flow basically ex extracts the approximate direction that each pixel tends to move between the frames. Um, it's using those same dx and dy, but it's comparing it over time. Um, so here you can see that as I move my hand um, in space, or actually if I click on this video, um, you'll see that as I begin to move my hand around in the video, and I apologize about the uh, quality of the video, but as I move, you can see that what's happening is it's measuring those same gradient vectors or using those same derivatives, but now it's comparing it over time and beginning to adjust the uh, vector magnitude as well as the direction. Um, so we can get an understanding of the movement or the quality of the movement happening at any given position in the, in the image as it's being sampled uh, using videos. We can also begin to discern other types of information uh, using other types of algorithms. Uh, in one particular instance um, that I think is quite interesting, the, the topic of averaging pixels over a number of samples. Um, there's a number of uh, digital artists who are exploring this, Pat David being one of them, who actually created an artwork uh, who compared all of the 2012 Miss America contestants um, and what we get, begin, as you begin to average each of the pixels over and over based on each of the different contestants, what is revealed is sort of our notion of beauty, right? What is the common commonality, the averages um, of the shape of the eye or the mouth or the nose or the shape of the face? What is the commonality between all of the different contestants which begin to um, create more of a... Uh, uniform distribution or something that we can actually begin to understand as the shape of an eye that actually for us defines beauty. Um, that's one example, but really what's happening behind the scenes is there are lots of different ways you can take averages. Of course, you can take the sum and divide by the count. Um, another technique that's often used is something called temporal smoothing. And essentially in this algorithm, um, what we're doing is storing a previous value. We're going to take the color value at each pixel. And we're taking the value of all of the pixel that we just stored and multiplying it by a weighted value, in this case, say 0.8, so 80%. Um, and then the new image that just it just received, we're going to take that same value but only multiply it by a smaller percentage. In this case, um, it's the inverse of 1 minus our other weight. So in this case, it's 0.2 if the other one is 0.8. So the sum of both of those weights should equal 1. But what this means is that 20% um, of the color information from the new image is added to 80% of the earlier one. And that number can change, but basically the higher that number um, on this side, if that number is 0.9 and this is 0.1, that means a smaller amount of new information is being added each time. Um, versus um, if it's lower, it will converge on an actual image more quickly. Um, so what this actually looks like is we can actually begin to uh, add a little bit of information over time. So if a, uh, an object is moving very quickly, it won't very much, it won't register very much on the scene. But if an object stays in place over time, 
it will slowly begin to reveal itself, um, which is an interesting phenomenon that can be applied in many different uh, techniques. So here's another video uh, that's showing the temporal smoothing. Um, here you can see as I hold my hand in place, it begins to um, it begins to emerge or stay still, but then as I move very quickly, it's it's sort of uh, disappearing. Um, so you can begin to leave traces or artifacts in a scene, depending on how quickly you want to um, have that fall off, those weighted values. Um, and so Grasshopper and Firefly, or Firefly essentially, has a temporal smoothing component which very easily allows you to begin to play around with this, not only on the color information, but also the uh, derivative, the movement uh, information that we see. So let's look at a couple really quick examples of how some of these techniques can be